Uh, this is a, a really neat deal for me. I grew up literally just right next door to JJ and, and I worked for his dad in high school. And I ran a small commercial flock of sheep in high school and his dad in the early 90s went to going around to these little sale barns. Used to be a sale barn in every little town in Oklahoma. And he was picking up little goats here and there and we were the talk of the county. Because I had uh, a Dorset Rambouillet cross sheep and he was picking up goats and uh, that kind of got my start in, uh, in the sheep and goat business. Uh, but it's a, it's a neat deal that I'm here with JJ today. He's been a, a long time friend. His dad was a huge influence on me. And we're gonna talk a little bit about facilities. We want you to feel comfortable enough to uh, ask questions. We're gonna show you some pictures and, I, and I'll promise you they are not the most pristine facilities, but they're uh, an example of how uh, economical you can, you can have some setups. And, and to me, that's the most important thing. You can have the nicest facilities around, but if you're not turning a profit on, on, your, uh, on your herd or your flock, then it's, then it's pretty pointless to be in the business. Um, you have anything to share before we get going? Just one thing I'll tell you, sir. Justin told me I was doing this talk when I showed up this morning. So I don't have pictures, but I do have stories. So we'll go from there. And, and a lot of these pictures will be of stuff of what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can tell you exactly what not to do and, and what to do. So, so what, what we've got here, uh, this is really just a gathering facility. Uh, this old barn that you see in the background was, it was a loafing shed for cattle years ago and it's been converted into, into a goat barn. Um, we split that facility in half and uh, part of it you can see right in here. This is all open in here. This is just a windbreak, uh, but we've utilized a few runs and as you can see, we spent a lot of money on them wood pallets. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, the only money we had in that was, was just time going and picking them up. Uh, but what these are, this is a really simple uh, catching facility, holding facility for goats. These are about 10 foot wide, about 20 foot long. And the reason we've got them about that wide is uh, mostly because that's where the beams are, but also it's a little easier to catch something in a space like that. If you go to dealing with sheep and goats, I don't know about y'all's, but mine tend to get a little skittish and like to run and jump off the walls and everything else. And this is an area you can close it off a little quicker and get a hold of something if you have to. Uh, here's just a little close up. These here is just a little bunk line we've put in. Those are uh, buckets off an elevator leg. Elevator was taking a leg out, had them laying out. So uh, the only money we had in them was just going over and picking them up. And we screw them straight into those wood pallets, put them about shoulder high, um, and they work great for feeding out of. Here's a look from inside that windbreak. Uh, we just try to space out these. We don't hold a lot of goats in here. This is really, right now there's some goats up there because we're going through a little fencing project, so we've got to have them up there. But most of the time we'd like to have them out in the pasture doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, but we just, we try to space these out to where it gives them room to eat. You've always got one or two that's gonna try to push everything else away and it doesn't matter how far you got them apart, but if we had them right next to each other, we'd have one to just shove everything out of the way and wouldn't been able to get nothing. This is a little working facility we've put together. Uh, this is a tub system. This gate here will swing all the way around as a crowding tub, bring them up the race. The chute here is a tilt chute. It'll tilt about halfway. It's good for doctoring, trimming hooves or whatever. The way that we've got this set up, uh, this is actually, we would be looking north at this right now if, if we was at our place. We've got a little lane that goes from east to west they hang a right and they go north and they go right into that tub and their natural instinct is to turn around and come back. And so as we shut that gate, they just naturally lead up into that race and into the chute. Um, one of the things that we did when we got that is we opened up all the gates and just took them through that about five times. Just got them used to walking in, having that gate come around behind them, going right up the race into the chute and out and then back into the pen. And so far, we've had zero trouble getting goats into there. It, it's, we haven't always had that. Uh, 
we used to manhandle everything, which you can lose your religion real quick doing that. This here has made working goats fun. You know, my kids, I've got twins that are seven years old. They come up and can help. Uh, that chute will tilt to about right here. And if you're trimming hooves, you've got the hooves right here to trim on. Or if you need to give a vaccination, it's right there. The goats haven't fought it much. Uh, it's, and, and, and again, this was a very economical purchase. This was found, I'm, I'm notorious. People used to call me a rock flipper. I found my goats on bargain. I found all my equipment on bargains. This was sitting in a weed pile about eight miles from my house. Never knew it was there. And the guy took a picture of it, pieced out, and said, you know anybody interested in this? And I thought, well, where's that at? And he goes, it's at my house. I thought, well, no wonder you hated working your sheep. You had that set up sitting in the weeds and never even utilized it. So we went over, bought it very cheap, reinforced it. It had some rust issues, so we, we stouted it up a little bit. Uh, we don't have very much money in that, but I tell you, uh, from the perspective of, of working goats without it and with it, it's worth every penny I spent on it. Justin, is that an old calf cradle? No, sir. It, I tell you, is it a sheep? it's a sheep one. It was Les McNally's old unit, if you remember Les. Yep. We, yeah. we, the calf cradle that you're talking about, I've, I've used, tell them, they're heavy. Yeah. I mean, they're meant for cattle, to be honest with you. And after doing that about 30 times one day, I decided it was better, easier for me to bend over and trim hoods. Because after about, and again, it, it was just a heavy technique, because it took some muscle to kind of flip it up. It was heavy for me. This one right here, I, you could tell there's not a lot of weight to it. And so that would make it a lot simpler. And, and again, what I deal with, usually, most generally, well, it's, it's ladies who are working with goats or and doing this goat stuff, and the calf table thing would have, I mean, it wore my wife out in a heartbeat. And so I like this one a lot better. And I'll, I'll tell you, the, the framework on this is heavy. It takes a couple guys moving stuff around, but when it comes to that chute, it's like you can just poop, flip it, and that natural weight just takes it over, gravity takes over. And, and, and I like it where it kind of keeps that goat, its back's at a little angle where its feet's up. They may kick a couple times, but it, it has just made working, working goats fun again. Not that it's ever real fun, but it's, it's a lot better than trying to grab them, snub them up to a fence, do what you need to do. It doesn't have a head catch on it. They just walk in and it's got a squeeze to it. We just give a little push, holds them in place, lift up and they're there. I did years ago, and I had trouble getting them going up the ramp, and J.J. utilized one like that. Billy Goat grubs stuff, and rubs stuff, and runs them runs up the ramp, and right here. Right. Yeah, and that's what I told him. It was sitting at my house. Somebody come by and say, hey, you interested in selling that? Sure am. Because <laughs> I, I could not get, I fought the goats more than I, I'm a step more interested in fighting the goats to get them in the hallway, up the ramp, and then, like you said, when you got to the head catch part, the horns, I'm used to working cattle, I've done this in my entire life, you know, that's, you sit there and wait for the head to go in and slam it shut. You're reaching in there, grabbing, twisting the head, pulling it in, and then locking it in. So, I didn't like it very much, and so, felt, and I, my story, again, was a little different than his story. When I started this back in about 06, 05, I can't remember the dates now, but, uh, my boys were, I had three boys, uh, 10, 8, and five or whatever, and, and as they've gotten bigger, now mine are now 20, 18, and 15. I don't do a lot of labor, so anything we're talking, we're gonna talk about working, <laughs> it, go grab it. <clears throat> Story, my boy is fixing to go to school, graduate, go to vet, he wants to go to vet school. So we're out pulling blood for pregnancy tests. I'm gonna, he's, he's jumping uh, sheep actually up on the stand. So, man, I hate this. I ain't doing this. I said, son, you're fixing to go to school, vet school. What are you going to do? He said, no, Dad, you understand? I'm going to be doing what you're doing. I'm not going to be doing this stuff. <laughs> so, so when we talk about facilities, I can take you to my side, my operation, where I have no mechanicals. I wish I had. And I, there's some dream stuff I'd like to buy. 
uh, vary the scene in some of this stuff. We and, and at this year's goat camp, we hope to have it too. There's companies that make these tub systems, and and they do work so much nicer to to run them in in in, in the alleyway. But there's no ramp. Now they, they do have one company I know that's still ramping systems. Like that. I'm not so sure I would want to use that, but but. It's, I use manual labor now. Like I said, my, my 20 year old's in Weatherford going to school. Uh, my 18 year old's talking about going to Arkansas and going to school. And my 15 year old's in the house going, wait a minute, I get to do this all by myself? So, so we may have to change things as we move along. And so, and so, like I said, the tub systems, and they're not that difficult to find. Now, it's sticker shock, don't get me wrong. And I'm an economist. He, he talks about being cheap. I, he don't have nothing on me. Uh, my wife can't stand how cheap I am at times. And so, I, but we always talk about, when I talk to goat producers or sheep producers, I always talk about this is something that it's not a necessity, it's a kind of a luxury, but you can get along with that and make your money, and make a profit and build your up stuff up to it. But these things, once you get them, you'll wonder why I didn't buy them 10 years ago. It's, so it's just one of the things you got to weigh in the Because, I mean, I think the tub system and everything was like $1,400. Northeast Cape Company out of Paris, Texas. There's one in Cleveland, Oklahoma that makes them. And there's probably two or three around here that make these uh, tub systems for these sheep and goats. So, so uh, I mean, it's, again, these, these are all systems. And, and, and I, always, I always tell people, like I said, it's, it's something you can work up to. You know, he's got pallets. When I first set up, Panels were the 16 foot cattle panels. Anyway, who in here's got goats and had to use those and hates those? Okay, I mean, it's just it really it's just, it's just a buffet line for dogs and cows, and you know, it's just uh, and but as he said, my dad when he started, we were in the cattle business, and so we just repurposed everything, and now we slowly have switched over and got rid of all the 16 foot cattle panels. Now, it's still hard because. Wire panels were cheap. Now they're not those panels are cheap. So, you know, now you got to go to four by four squares and stuff like that. Not wire panels. What we just call wool panels. Uh, but again, it's not something you, you can work it. And you can do everything in sheep and goats without having any of this. Now, catch pins, like he talks about, every pin we have has a smaller catch pin because they're flighty. And so we run them, and, and because like, even with three boys, there's only so many corners in the pen, so uh, we do that. But so it's something that you can work your way up to. And, but now I suggest, you know, if you can make it work out economically, that these are the way, this way go. It'll, it'll save. It might save. Actually, may save you money in medical bills. Luckily, not on wood. My boys, they've got hurt, but never working goats. So, but they've got hurt, but not. I, we've had broken arms and broken fingers and stuff, and then it's sports or something else that's going on. And we, and I'll clarify again, we were very, very fortunate that this thing just fell in my lap. We basically sold a goat and, and paid for it. The guy needed to move it. We were at the right place, right time. And I think, I, I'll go back to kind of your question on that ramp. I think why this has worked so well is it's just, it's a natural feel for the animal. We don't have it angled in at the bottom where it's uncomfortable. They can walk through there, their natural stride and everything. It's just natural for them to go in. We're not putting them in an awkward situation at all. And, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Is it's Nothing's unnatural to them. They just walk right in, we squeeze it. There's no head catch to it or nothing like that. Um, do, you worm, do you worm in that, do you worm them in that shoe? Or? We can. Yeah, you do everything. I mean, it's just one stop. It's got a, you really can't see it in this picture, but right around in here, there's a little top to it. When we, we didn't know what we had when we got it. We thought everything was put upside down and we disassembled it and found out, oh, it was put together right. What that is, is it'll slide down on top of them and hold them in place, or you can lift it up. And then when you lift that chute, you tilt it, you can push that goat against the back of that to get more of an angle, but you can do whatever you want in there. It's, it's made it really, really easy. And, and yeah, there's a lot of new systems out there that'll cost you some money. Uh, I just say, be diligent on, on uh, looking for the bargains. And, and, I, and after we've seen how this is set up, I ain't so sure a guy couldn't build one pretty, well, pretty cheap too. You engineer, all you really gotta purchase is that solid gate. And you can engineer that 
with wire panels, really. You don't have to use wire panels. Just and he, he uses elevator uh, buckets that are high of a, a, a rock, a, a cement plant that belting. They they longest con conveyor belt, and so they have to replace the belt. We just buy belting and we attach the belting to the panels. And they can't get through it. It just makes it a solid wall. That works really good with box too. Yeah. It, it, and, and like I said, we can engineer this, and like I said, it's, it's things, it works, there's things that, you know, works great, and there's, and again, it's, the one thing that I do wish I had that, said that the company makes that I saw, they had an alleyway with the top of it broke down, so it's this tall, and then it breaks down, so I can actually walk in there and worm every one of them as they're sitting in line, you know, and I can reach down and grab their mouths and go, so, or if I have to give shots as well. And, and uh, I'll follow up on that. Only one side of that shoots solid. The other side, there's just a couple rails on it. Where, you, where you're on that working side, you've got access to anything you need. So if you need to get a hold of a horn to drench one, you can drench. It's, uh, like I said, it's been a, it was a nice little find. Um, this is a little stall facility that we've got put up. This is the back half of that loafing shed that you've seen earlier. All, the, all this is is a stall system for, for kid and goats. Because we kid in Kansas, it's uh, cold, usually December, January, February. And this is, the way we set this up, um, I can tell you, we've got very little money invested in that. All that material that you're looking at, well, 90% of it come off a construction site. That stuff was fixing to go to the landfill. We just happened to know the, the contractor. He gave it to us for nothing. We went in and we build individual stalls in there. Um, this back area is wide open where if you need to put multiple does in there, whatever you can. Um, I will clarify, this looks like a heat lamp. It's not. This generally stays 10 degrees or warmer than your outside temperature. Uh, we, during this kidding season, we, we shot a little video at work and it was cold and raining outside. It was 33 degrees. Inside that barn, it was 45 degrees, and those goats were perfectly comfortable. The main thing is, is they were dry out of the wind and everything. Uh, that that is just an extra light that when we've got does in these stalls, we can get a little better look at them because the lighting in here is not great. It's just these string of lights here that came off that construction site. They're not nothing fancy. Uh, those stalls, well, this whole area. From this wall to this wall here, it's about 10 foot wide. That's all that is. This little material that you see here, these are pre-built stalls. If we need to add more, we're ready to go. Just, we slap them in place, put a couple screws in them. But here's a look inside the stall. These are about seven foot deep, six foot wide, and the goat's got plenty of room to maneuver around. You can see one here that's got a couple babies on her. The main thing is, is they're, they're comfortable in there. They're dry and they're comfortable. They're not uh, stirred up. It's a really good spot to bring them in, especially in the winter. You know, if it was a little warmer, we'd let them do their normal thing out in the pasture. But in the winter, it's imperative that you keep them uh, warm and dry. And these does, they're perfectly comfortable in there. Helps them mother up to them babies, get them going. Uh, we do not use this as a long-term facility. The goal is get the babies up and going, and what we'll do is we will move them outside back into those, that, those run systems and stuff, and outside we've got this little contraption here. This is just a warming box, and uh, you can see it's another high dollar facility put together. This is a crate off an old chemical tote that we cut out a little spot for the babies to get in, but what this is is a warming box. We don't keep it hot, we just keep it warm. Just got a single light over here inside of here with a few feed bins, those babies can go in there. If it's extremely cold, they can walk in there, grab them a bite to eat, lay down, stay warm, stay dry. The does can't get in there. Uh, and that's, that's something we've done since the very beginning because we raise show goats. I've never been a commercial producer and so, Every one of them counts. I mean, we've got to keep them alive to, to maximize our profit. And this right here, I learned a long time ago, if a goat's out there standing and shivering, it ain't gaining weight. And our goal has always been 
you know, get them, get them up, get them growing, and get them turned. We, uh, we, we sell them as young as 74 and 76 days old is how fast we can try to turn them. Good, good feed and, and just little stuff like this. It's, that's a very inexpensive uh, little tool, but it can help you in the long run. I've seen a lot of people do this in like, you know, the plastic, white plastic that's in those chemical totes, they'll set a heat lamp up in there. Why, why don't you just put a heat lamp in a corner, you know, where the babies can go and get warm? Why do, why do people create those boxes and put heat lamps in those like that? We have this like this so the babies only can get in. You can, you can create them however you want. What we wanted was something where only the babies can get in there and get warmed up and, and eat. Because we'll keep feed in here all the time for them and, we're, and we don't have our mothers on full feed. If, if the mothers had access to that, they'd go in, wipe out all that feed and, and the goal is for us is to get those babies eating and growing. And, uh, but this, that being said, this whole area over on this side, we can enclose that to where it's out of the elements. We don't put a heat lamp in there, um, but it, it's dry and it's out of the wind. There's a windbreak right there. But this is just a spot to get those babies where they can get in, get warmed up. Uh, we never had, first couple of years we raised goats, we didn't have something like this and it seemed like we was always running into train wrecks. This is, was a good little project for us. Another thing goes here, goats are real sociable or real, they gather real, and so they can, if you get one warm spot and the, and the adults are in there, they can get in there and you could have a chance to get yeah. smothered. And I have lost babies being smothered inside, because we don't, you know, we can't make them in June, I'm not dealing with any of this, okay? Uh, I wouldn't do, but I still have to bring them up, and we still get cold weather, and and they, they, it does, I have one pen that has three, houses in it, three different houses and they're all bunched up in one and the other ones are empty or there's one boss goat in front of the one in there keeping it empty for herself and everybody else but so it's so you got to kind of be wary of that on, on goats and, and just to make sure that you don't get the little bit smothered because he's right since you're anything under 40 degrees seems like and you're taking a chance especially if they're wet i'll back up for a second you can see this door here that leads into the kidding, into the kidding barn where those stalls are. And we, we have very rarely fully enclosed that. I mean, if we got to, we can, but we leave that split door where there's some air kind of coming through, keeping it fresh. And I mean, they can get kind of rank if you don't have some vents in there and stuff. Uh, but our main deal is keeping them dry. We, we do have a furnace in that kidding facility. We don't even like that light there that's not a heat bulb. That's just a light bulb. It's just a look, in that little area, that little box stays warm enough just with a light bulb in there. And we don't use heat lamps in the kid stalls either. If we have to, we can turn that furnace on, but we've turned it on one time in seven years. We, we just haven't had the extreme weather. Uh, in that stall facility, it is insulated. Uh, we, we, that was really the only cost that we really had was we went and got the old styrofoam insulation at the lumber yard and put that up and then just put some plywood over that. But we made the ceilings, they're about six foot three. I mean, they're just right here. Everything's tight. It's low where we can walk around, but it, it keeps it warm. You know, and when you've got four, five, six, seven, eight does in there, just the natural body heat of them helps tremendously. Um, I think that's all those pictures. We can talk a little bit about pastures and fences. I can tell you, when I first got into the goat business, sheep and goats, people told me they was all alike, and, and we found out in a hurry they're not. <laughs> I, I tell you, anybody know how to test a fence to see if it's goat proof? Hold water. Huh? Well, what you do is you take a hot cup of coffee, okay? And you walk up to it and you throw it on there. If that coffee does not bounce back and hit you in the leg, yet go can get out of it. It's, and even then they probably can't get out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's tough. And, and for, like I said, it's a little different from but same thing. We we try to kid the pastures or the paddocks, wherever they're at. As soon as they kid, they get brought into the barns. And my, 
he talks about being cheap. I, I have a little fancier system than him. He does, but the reason why we do is because somebody else's goats got out and ate the wife rose bushes, and so they needed to be gone and all the equipment gone before he got divorced. And so I, <laughs> so I was able to pick it up pretty cheap. But uh, we bring them in, and again, it's not a forever facility. Seven days max, we try to let them in. We get them tagged. We get the mamas looked at. We, you know, hoof trimming goes on that time of year. Uh, vaccinations and stuff. We do all that, and then we put them out into another paddock. And then where he's feeding them indoors because you know, we've got a creek feeder. <coughs> now, goats are Houdini, and, and so your creek feeder gates have to be. And, and you can buy the special goat ones, or you can buy the cattle, uh, somebody's old cattle one, and retrofit it and make it work. But you can do that. So I mean, there's that. And then you then they have to have the barn space. All my barns are built out of recycled. You know, like I said, somebody going to the landfill, I picked up all the sheet iron at an estate sale that nobody could count the pile, it was all stuff. So I just bought it and ended up with 45 sheets of sheet iron stuff. stuff. So it's, again, you can scrounge and look around and make it work. It doesn't have to be. And, and like I said, when we first got started, we had nothing. And, uh, I mean, somebody would hold the goat while somebody worked on the goat. So that's, my wife's going to have to go back to work in the goats now because, like I said, our labor force is dwindling. Mm -hmm. When we, we first bought goats, his dad told me that story. He said, these aren't sheep. And he said, when you go to build your fence, when you think you've got it the way you, you want it, you go brew your pot of coffee and pour your cup, and you go out there and you throw it at it, and if it doesn't bounce back, they're going to get out. And he was 100% right. Uh, the, the, the best fencing that we ever had that, that we was able to keep goats in and, and, and keep predators out is we ran uh, different pastures, four and five strand hot wire, every wire was hot and nothing got out and nothing got in. Um, we're doing some revamping at the house right now. We, we built up a goat herd years ago and was all, all about it. Had some older kids graduate and move off and my late, uh, like JJ's fixing to go through it. My labor crew was only three at that point. We got older kids and younger kids and uh, so we scaled way down, and I was telling JJ, if something doesn't change between right now and tomorrow, we're fixing to go buy another herd and be back in it thick. But one of the pastures we got the house right now, it's six strands of barbed wire with a hot wire. So there's seven strands of fence. And sometimes that works real good. Sometimes I have no idea how they get out. They just seem to be out in the front yard and. Everywhere, everywhere you don't want them to be. So in our little revamping, we'll probably go back to utilizing the hot wire a little bit more. And, and we used one of those high dollar, we spent the money on a Gallagher charger and it's one of them ones you do not want to touch it. I, I mean, I got a buddy of mine that's an electrician and he hit it once and he said words I didn't know he could say. And he said, I have never been grabbed by something like that. I mean, it just shook him from one end to the other. Uh, but we utilize a lot of hot wire, uh, and we, we use a couple dogs as well. We've got a, a Miramar, and we've got a Pyrenees Cross, and both of those dogs were worth every penny we, we spent on them. They don't wander off. We've never, we have never, in 10 years, we've never lost an animal to predators. Now, there's guys... We got cattle all the way around us, and we've got guys that'll lose calves every year to coyotes, but we've never lost a single goat. And I'm gonna chalk it up to those two dogs. I mean, they are not pets. You can't walk up and, and love on them or anything. Uh, they won't even come up and eat when you're there. You dump their feed in the pan and walk off, and I'm assuming they're eating it because they're still alive. <laughs> but they're, I mean, they, they're true working dogs. Um, and, and those are, I think when a guy goes to purchase something like that, do your homework because we have bought a couple before that we didn't do our homework on and it turns out they were lab and Pyrenees cross and they spent more time in the water tanks and pointing birds than they did sitting with goats. I have a question on your dogs. Yes. How do you ever give them a rabies shot or a lepto shot? Uh, never have. They got all their shots when we picked them up and we've never gave one since then. Yep. That's always a fear that I have is they attract rabies. We've, 
we've never we've never had them kill anything a predator just like we'll we'll see some tracks along the perimeter it's just like them being there and barking and their presence just keeps everything away do you worm them once in a while i haven't they are they're pretty much all natural <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're anything like my dogs. Now, we've talked a bunch about, you know, being very cheap and very, uh, I, I like to use words, very economical. I don't like the words cheap. But, <clears throat> but <clears throat> one thing I do try to stress to people is don't underestimate the cost of going into this and doing this. Um, you know, things cost money, and, you, and, and I have learned, part of the hard way, sometimes it's worth the extra dollar to buy some of the better stuff. Uh, so, you know, always kind of try to figure out cost a little bit and, and don't be too afraid to spend a little bit of money. Uh, but, and then again, you, know, <laughs> you don't need the $50,000 one-ton dually to drive in, in the $1,000 box or the $12,000 trailer. You, know, you can get those, don't get me wrong. And, and they are nice, you know, to drive around town to the coffee shop. You know, I, still in Oklahoma, we still laugh at because we have goats and sheep, but, you know, but we still can drive expensive trucks just like the cattle guys do, and, and owe as much money as they do too. Um, <laughs> but it stops things. It's not things. But there are things, little things. Uh, guardian animals, whether you want dogs, and, and if you're going to ask my opinion, I'm going to go dogs every time. I don't like donkeys. I don't like llamas. Uh, I like the dogs. Uh, uh, again, I'm like Justin. Dogs need to keep, take care of themselves. I mean, I'm going to feed them. Uh, but we do. I have one. I was telling Barry the story uh, coming up here. Uh, he was feeling, and he's got some tick disease. So he did get to go to bed uh, for the first time in his life. And so, uh, and I'm not sure I can afford to take him back. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, the guardian animals is something you're going to have to think of. Uh, Traws. Uh, it's not a very good thing. We have the number one thing we have a problem with is parasites. And now you want to feed them on the ground. Where all the parasites are, uh, so trials, tractor supply does not give our atwoods. I guess does not give those troughs away. Water troughs. Goats do not like to leak, drink out of streams and creeks and ponds as much as they do troughs. They don't. They don't like to wade the water. What they don't like to do. So there's little things that you're gonna have to just and and some things you're gonna want that you can get later on uh, and make things work. So. I forgot one one of the. Reasons we may not have any trouble with them dogs getting sick from predators or whatnot is we've got a diversion. It's called a red healer. <laughs> and it seems like every porcupine that comes across the place finds his face, <laughs> and, it, and every skunk that comes across the place about every two weeks finds him. He still ain't figured out, don't chase the black and white cats. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm going to chalk it up that he's the one that's getting all the blunt of everything because he makes frequent trips to the vet. <laughs> But the, but the guardian dogs have never, never left the place. Um, JJ did mention... A good home guardian dog is not a good dog. So I, I, tried, I gave one of those away and came back. The reason I gave it away is to kill my chickens. And after he killed it, that guy's chickens, he brought them back to me. <laughs> JJ mentioned uh, if you can't afford it, there are good panel systems and stuff. What I would tell you is um, you, you've got to be be careful on what you're getting. You know, we, we're utilizing some cattle panels right now in a dry lot, and that is not the ideal thing to do because we've got some that we call them cattle panel addicts. They seem to get their head in there on a frequent basis. Uh, those four by four square ones are great. There's also guys that fabricate some. I know there was a guy at Woodward that he made us a full pin system years ago when we were really going strong in the show goat deal. Um, we hit a pretty good look and spent the money and bought them. They, they were wor worth everything. My biggest regret was when we scaled down, uh, a guy made me an offer and I had a weak moment and sold them and I've kicked myself ever since then. Because it was one of them that gates just lined up about like this facility, you walk from one thing to the next to the next and didn't have to venture around. We've kind of cobbled stuff together right now to make it work. Um, but the closer you can get the pipe, or the closer you can get the squares, the better, especially on goats, because they, they like to crawl or go through everything. We don't, 
We don't have an issue with them really jumping anything unless we put pressure on them in a small area, then they'll scale a wall or whatever else, but usually they try to go through or under everything at our place. We got a couple of sets of bolt cutters hanging up in Yep. And the best way, just can't do out. And, and we've got several panels like that now because again, my dad moved next to me, door to me, so we were. I wouldn't say we were doing things together because we still didn't agree on how to do things. So, uh, but and so I know I have inherited all these panels that are got big holes where he's cut them all out. And, and so, uh, but there is an easy way to stop them out of the cattle panels if you don't mind your goats looking silly. You can take a PVC pipe with the horns, those sections, and they, or they can the horns here, and then they, that stops it. So either that or you knock the horns off, which I'll be honest with you, I like all my bucks without horns. Because the older they get, the worse they seem to got. And they don't seem to tear. I, all my all but one buck are homeless, and they don't seem to tear stuff up without horns. Now, I, I leave all the horns on my, on my does just because they're handless. They get handled a lot more than the bucks do. Is that the rolled fence you can get that says keep your The rolled one? Yeah. Should, should be four inch squares. Is what, four, they'll, they'll probably say four inch stays. And that's what you, you don't want anything more bigger than four inch. Because four inch, and even the wire, I've got a lot of that four inch filled with fence. Every time the babies are pushing their heads through it. But it's not a huge problem. But it, and over time, and then there's more expensive fence. It's made of it, 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 and it's really nice, and, and, and but it's really expensive. It's it, I got a section of it on my place that got put up for demonstration purposes, and I wish that the whole perimeter was in it. it, it it's beautiful because I can lay on top of it in the spring. It's high tensile, but it's double the cost of what the other fences. Three three mm -hmm. it's not around the perimeter. We have woven wire that's seven by ten on lots of acres, and it's not a problem. It well. Works well. The, the company makes that little small stay fence. They make one that's 12 inch stays, which the goat can have their heads in and out. Yeah. And I like that, except that the babies can then go in and out. Yeah. So, uh, which I would, so I would put, I always tell people I put that on the interior because the babies are not going to go very far. They're going to go, they're not going to get outside of mama really. So they're going to come back and forth. So I, I don't worry about it, but I don't want them, you know, I, don't have a, I don't have a major road in front of my house, but I do have a road. And I don't want them to have a road. So. The guys who drive up down my road are good for school. <laughs> Any other questions? Again, if you come to Goat Camp, you get to see my place. Because again, I can show you, don't do this. Don't do what I did. It doesn't work. Uh, I also show, uh, we do pasture tour and talk about <coughs> words and stuff. But uh, comp uh, who has to deal with dead goats or dead sheep and goats? I have sheep now too. Okay. I, I was silly enough. I mean, I thought goats, it wasn't enough punishment to have goats. I thought I'd be sheep too. Um, so, uh, in, in the first lesson that I always tell goat producers and now sheep producers, uh, they die. Uh, and you never know why. Uh, so, but I, so I have a compost top. And so I'm, I can tell you how to compost sheep and goats. So that's. We did the butcher we, 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 had, we had a small one, and it, it was okay. But now I took some old round bell hay and I got two by three by two and go down there and just, it's... <clears throat> we got a hole dug in the pasture. Like I said, no homeless law, you either have to bury them or ship them off or compost them. So I, and my boys didn't like digging holes for some reason. And, and when they did, they did dig holes, they were never deep enough. I'd go back out there, yeah, something dug that one up. So, so we stopped digging holes. And we don't own a big enough place to drag them off to the back. And wait. Did you call up to you before you dug the hole? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't quite have to worry about that where I'm at. I mean, uh, I'll share one thing. We've, it, as we said earlier, we do a lot of things to show you what not to do. Uh, here's another recommendation. We've started, uh, we, another one of those deals, found a set of scales. Pig, sheep, goat sales. Family was getting out of the pig business and we got them for little or nothing. I can promise you it was little or nothing or they wouldn't be on my place. Those are very handy. If you want to see how efficient your feed program is, catch, catch weights, catch, catch a birth weight, catch a weaning weight. We wean fairly early, but then we'll turn around and catch a 90-day weight. And we can kind of see 
what those babies are gaining, just how good our feed program is. If we need to make adjustments, if we've got a doe that's really, her babies aren't producing, uh, one of the most, uh, how's the best way to put this? We've got a doe on the place, if you went to my house, you'd go, why is that one there? Well, because she weaned the most amount of pounds uh, in the last kid crop, that's why she's there. She doesn't, she's not that good a goat, she doesn't look like the rest of them, but she weaned 85 pounds of goat this year, and that was it. Uh, I think we weaned those at 68 to 72 days. Got 85 pounds off them two babies. And but we, we know that for sure because we ran them through the scale. And it helps a little bit more on if you're given a vaccination or worm and it gets you a little closer to where you need to be. That way, if you're given an improper dose, you're not going to make something resistant or ineffective. Uh, yeah, as I said, medications, all medications are based on weight. And I can miss a chicken weight by 10 pounds. So, so I'll, I'll just, just an idea. What do y'all think instead of goat scales would cost you? Buy them brand new today. I got 350. Anybody think higher? Or more? I bought my set of scales off the internet for $215. Now, I bought them, I could go up to about two and a half or a little less than what you're talking about and get the platform. Mine was just the load bars and the, and the scale head, and I built the platform. Because I, I tried running with the platform, and that works okay, so you've got to build the scale. Yeah, that's Set right. Cool. Yeah, but so, but he's right, I, and I've got to say, and, and it's, like I said, people, when we first started doing this back in 06, 07, the set of scale was $1,500. I mean, it didn't matter what you, they've gotten really cheap, so I'm, and really, you, you can make that $300 back pretty quick. Like I said, weights and stuff. Because how many out there think that your goat, average goat, is 125 pounds? I, would, I, I tell this story because I had these great big. <coughs> I first got in this purebred boar goat thing. Okay. These girls were monsters. I mean, they're just going raw. I'm like, oh, they weigh 200 pounds. They were good. I was walking. I put them on a scale one time. It's 140. I was like, oh, okay. I missed. So. And then you can take one that looks like 140 and she'll weigh it too. Oh yeah. Don't get me started about how bad children screw up things. Not raising them, so I don't think I can help. Raising animals before the doctor. Like I said, all the, all the, and we got a veterinarian in the room, so if I say something wrong, he'll tell me on the way home, I'm sure. Uh, but but no, so they're all, all you know, worming, all worming is based on weight. And so, it's, now do I weigh every animal? No, I weigh one or two to get an idea. And go a good place to find them. Find a kid that's graduating high school that's been showing livestock. Showing pigs, especially. You find such things. That's where we found ours, and, and they was, was having a fire sale. I mean, everything was cheap. They wanted to get rid of it. And that, you can find some bargains that way. Or you find a guy or a gal that's frustrated in goat business, <laughs> and they'll sell stuff cheap, too. The one that's got up and, and sit on, on the wife's car, but usually those, those are going pretty cheap. <laughs> Or eat the rose bushes, but usually the color is. So in the meat field, man, again, if you haven't got one of those, they're here today to purchase, and in the back of that, it talks about composting and mortality and how to handle that. Yeah. And one way that they, they talk about uh, composting is with wood chips. Wood chips will help that be composed quicker than anything. And like if you know any one of the folks to this fairground, you can have all the wood chips you want for free, they'll be glad to load it for you. So uh, any county fairground and some sale barns, things like that, if there's wood chips around, they'll be glad to let you have them to help with your compost pile. So, That's how we started ours, the county fairgrounds. And it's got that nitrogen source, it's got the urine and and, and poop in there. So it's got that nitrous and to kind of start off with too. It worked real. Yeah, like I said, I, her, I almost sold my compost pile at one point in time. I, speak, I mean, the lady was going to come by because I don't personally put it on my garden. I just don't want to do that. But anyway, she said to come by and then, I mean, two days before she's supposed to come, my dad buried one in it. So, mm, can't have it yet. So, seems like we're constantly. Well, no, we don't do a very good job of turning it. Uh, and, and it works still. I mean, it, we tried to tie a talk. We, we now use a tractor to bury it in there instead of doing it by hand. So we get them pretty deep. But off the wood, we've had fairly good luck the last couple of years. We haven't had to put a whole lot in there. So. <clears throat>
Although I had to put my guardian dog in there to save it. I've lost three guardian dogs in the last six months. We have pups. Huh? We have pups. Yeah, that's a guy I've already found. But, but I, I wanted my, I, I'm fixing to go into kitten season with no adult dogs. I'm not very excited.